It's time for the show that engages with people of the combat sports world. And now, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed combat sports show champion of the world, Flash Knockdown! Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining me on episode 17 of Flash Knockdown with the number one ranked UK and Ireland's amateur lightweight mixed martial artist, Mark. You've been warned. You win. (laughs) That's fucking illegal. Welcome to the show, Mark. What's happening, man? How's it going? (laughs) I'm good. How is that nickname? That's good, man. I've never had a nickname before, man, but I like that. If you don't know, now you know. You've been warned. Too late, man. Too late. That's Everyone's right, brother. Warned. That's right. That's right. Now, I had to get you on the show, Mark, before you turn pro. So thank you very much for agreeing to come on. No problem at all, man. It's my pleasure. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So, Mark, before we go any further, could you give the viewers an overview of your MMA career, the gym you represent, and how people can find you online, please. My name is Mark Ewan. I'm 11, 3 and 1 in MMA. I'm 5, 0 and 1 in Muay Thai, and I represent higher level in Whitburn in Scotland. It's called, you can get me at, on Instagram at underscore Mark Ewan or Twitter Mark Ewan 4. Perfect. Thank you very much, Mark. We now no move on. Thank you, brother. We now move on to the next part of the show that I've called Flash Choices. For first-time viewers, I will ask Mark 10 questions with two possible answers. And Mark, you choose the one that best suits in a flash. Got it? Got it. All right. First one, Mark. Kickboxer or Rocky? Kickboxer. 100%. Why is that? A uh, big fan of Jean-Claude Van Damme growing up. That was the first kind of martial arts film that I've seen. And I remember actually after watching that, I was crazy. I was running about his knee in the walls and stuff like that. And that really got me, really burned that fire in my heart, man. That, that's when I first started Muay Thai, kind of just watching that. Excellent. And uh, I believe both Kickboxer and Rocky were the, were the two films that inspired you to take up martial arts. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 100%. Yeah. Okay. Second one then, uh, Mark. Kamara Usman or Israel Adesanya? Kamara Usman. And I believe you met Usman in uh, Fight Islands. Yeah, yeah. I met him when I was there. It was on the first day. He was, he was actually cutting weight, so didn't get a, much of a conversation with him, but it was brief. And just to see him and get a photo, obviously, fellow Nigerian Biller, so it was good to see him. And I'm a big fan of his work. Yeah, I mean, he's class. Uh, yeah, he definitely is a class act. And uh, he's facing Masvidal um, in a few weeks in the rematch. Who you got for that one? Kamar Usman again. I reckon you'll probably just do the same. Yeah, I mean, I, me too. Out and just may even get the finish. We'll see, man. But I'm a big fan of Kamar Usman. He's, I don't see yeah. him beating him at this, at this rate. No. Nah, too good, eh? He's massive at the weight as well, man. He's huge. Yeah, huge. Yeah, absolutely massive. I couldn't agree more. Do you think? Do you think if he if he stepped up to middleweight, he'd take out uh, Adesanya or or not? <laughs> I, don't, I never <laughs> see the guys fighting, man. They'll not fight just because they're both Nigerian. I don't Correct. see it happening. But and when it comes to Israel, I don't see him being Kamara being able to deal with Israel striking. Nah, He's just too good on the feet. Another level. Stuff. Yeah, agreed. That's right. Agreed. Okay, Mark, third one. Mai Tai or Muay Thai? Muay Thai, definitely. Yeah, and you're 5-0 and in Muay Thai? Yeah, yeah. So it's, I think it's 5-0 and 1. My first fight was a draw. Was Your first draw, fight was a draw? Was exit. Yeah, yeah. So it was one of the amateur, like my first ever fight. It was that guy's first ever fight. So they caught an exhibition, so they gave us both a draw. But I definitely won that fight, man. Ha, 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 ha. Next one then, Mark. Kobe Bryant 
o Shaquille O'Neal. Kobe Bryant. Definitely. Kobe. Kobe's a man. Yeah, man. Gone, gone too soon. Yeah, 100%. It's a shame, man. It is really a shame, but his work lives on. Like I said, man, his values and his principles and everything he's done for the game yeah. of basketball. Yeah. Yeah. His, his legacy lives on. Yeah. 100%. You're a big Lakers fan? Like I said, I'm, I'm just a big Kobe fan. That's it. Like, I, I like the Lakers, man, but I'm more a fan of Kobe. Like, yeah. His work ethic, man. He changed his number to 24 for 24. 24. Day, that's how much he's willing to work. You know what I mean? That's he's right. A workaholic. He's going to put everyone into it. And once I came to the NBA and I looked around, I saw all the guys that weren't working as much as I was. Then I started to understand that, you know, how I went about it is hard work. To me, it was just, I just love what I do. So I want to do it as much as possible. Just what he's done for the game of basketball. Obviously, you've got Michael Jordan, but you ain't got Michael Jordan. You always think of Kobe as well. Like he's he's a stud, man. He's solid. Yeah, he was okay. Next one, then Mark. Submission or KO? KO. Yeah, ha 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 ha. KO. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna, I'm gonna ask you a little bit later. The referee denied you, didn't he? This is number one bullshit. Aye, man, that hurts that one, man. <laughs> Deny me. He denied you. Oh, okay, oh, man. Oh, oh, man. I will cover I'm that later. That. Yeah, we'll cover that. One back. Oh, standards. With you, anything's possible. Yeah, you know it, bro. I know that, man. I know that, brother. Okay, next one, Mark. Mark Coleman or Mark Hunt? Mark Hunt. Mark Hunt. Why? Just his walk-off KOs and that one against the... Uh... Roy Nelson, oh, that was a peach, man. Just, oh, I like Mark Cunt, just the way he is in that as well. I like the Australians, man, they're cool. He's a cool guy. And I don't know too much about Mark Coleman. I know his name, but I've never really watched much of his fights or know much about him. Well, Mark Mark Coleman was the first uh, UFC heavyweight champion. Oh, really? Yeah, which is now Francis Ngannou. Shows how much yeah. I know, man. I need to study more than me, man. I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of old school enemy. I feel because it's so raw and it's so, it's yeah, and that's a bit different and it's weird. I'm not the biggest fan of watching it. I feel I get bored easy. I like to see crisp technique. Body moving, feet moving. Oh! I like to see the new modern age of MMA. We're even on total strikes at the moment. Oh! Yeah, that's what I'm more a fan of, like MMA nowadays, man. How it evolves and stuff. That's what I'm more a fan of. Yeah, a bit like Adesanya. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent like Adesanya. Vincent smiles. It. Oh! Yeah, man, it's still it's still a very young sport, so it's you know it it's it's evolving every year. Yeah, you forget how young MMA is, man. It's very relatively new and still it's the fastest growing sport in the world at the moment, man. I feel like we've came a long way, but I feel like we can still go a long way. Man. We can be in the Olympics and that soon, and that's when it will really take over. I think. Yeah, I think it's only like 20, uh, 28 years old. So yeah, very, very young. when you hear that, man. Nice. Yeah, very young. You, you'll you be in the UFC in a couple of years? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I'll, be I'll be getting the gold. I'll be doing it all, man. Standard. Okay, next one, Mark. Ewan Bremner or Jade's Ewan? Who? <laughs> Say that again, sir, please. Okay, okay. so two two namesakes. Ewan Bremner or Jade's Ewan? Jade Ewan. I don't know who they are. You don't know who they are? Okay, so nah. Ewan, okay. Ewan Bremner is a Scottish actor who is in train spotting or train, yeah, train spotting. Oh, Ewan McGregor. No, Ewan Bremner. Bremner? Yeah, Ewan Bremner. He, Ewan, Ewan spelled like, like the way you've got it spelled. E W. So mine's just E W E N, and his 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 is also E W E N. Is it? Yeah, you you in Bremner. I don't know who it is though. What have character you seen? is it in Train Spotting? Ah, oh, forget, I forget, I forget. Have you have you seen? He's in Train Spotting one and two. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it there for. Yeah, and uh, J uh, Jade's Jade Ewing also spelt like yours. She was in uh, Sugar Babes. Shows how much I know, man. I've not a scuba here. They are like really, and, and they've got it? they've got their names spelt like yours. I need to do. I need to do my my research, man, and find out. But we'll go with you and Bremner because I'm a big fan of Trainspotting. That's a Scottish film. Okay, we'll uh, 
It, it is. And I'm, I'm a big fan of Jade Ewan. Jade Ewan, if you're watching. Hey, around you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out, shout out. Next one, Mark. The rematch with Michael Quinn or the rematch with Nathan Jessimir? I want them both, mate. I want them both, but we're going to have to go with Michael Quinn because he got the finish. Yeah, he I've did. Never Armbar. Been, I've never been finished before. And, oh, that fucking haunts me, that one. Like That, that still cuts <laughs> deep. Oh, therefore. Yeah. Then that, and that was your last I loss. I June... the both of them now, man. I'd absolutely oh. struck the both of them. Course, course. Yeah, they, could, uh, they couldn't take the heat with you yeah, now, I man. see all my fights that I've lost. I'd love to get them back. Really? Do you watch your do you watch your losses more than your wins, or do you watch do you watch your wins more than your losses? I watch my wins more than my losses, but I've I've obviously watched my losses. I remember watching them once. Once you've lost, obviously you watch it, you analyze it, see what you went wrong. But that was a time in my life where I was losing quite a bit, so I didn't go back and dwell on that time. Yeah, I mean I've moved on. I'm a different person. So, but it's still it's still like to get the wins back at some point. Of course, of course. Okay, nine for one mark. Samantha or disaster? Oh man, eh? <laughs> disaster, disaster, disaster! Yeah, okay, disaster, lovely. Disaster, disaster. Okay, <laughs> and the last one, oh, then Mark. Dave and Jay Huss, man. That's right. That's right. I've done my research, haven't I? Uh, you know, man. My, my. You know, I know, brother. I know, man. I know. All right, and then the last one, Mark. Braids or skin fades? Say that again. Braids or skin fades? I'd say braids, man. Like, I would have braids right now, but I was, see if it wasn't for the high maintenance, man. See, try to, obviously, I got my, I was getting my hair twisted and stuff. But see, try to wrestle and that, man, they're coming out. Oh, it's a total nightmare. So I'll actually have a skin fade or a skin head just because it's convenient. <laughs> that is actually it. Just because yeah. it's convenient, man. I'd much rather have dreads, but it is what it is. Yeah. You you were looking like uh, Kevin Lee with them braids. Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I like Kevin Lee, man. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kevin Lee's cool, man. So, how did you enjoy your flash choices, Mark? Good. Uh, that was good, man. That was good. Uh, especially that last one there, man. Obviously, disaster. I'm like, what was he talking about? And then I was like, obviously, it's Jay Huss and Dave, man. I've got to. Obviously, you've done your research. You know who I like. You know what I like. You're, Questions like about Kobe and Shaquille and that man. I enjoyed that. Yeah, and Most you even got to that, man. Where you need to think fast. Good, and and you even got to know about you and Bremner. Ah, uh, therefore, man, I'll need to look them up. I'll need to look that Jade doing up as well. Obviously, never. I know, I know the sugar babes. I think everyone does, but I just never knew who. But I'll need to look that one up. Therefore, look her up, man. Look her up. All right, Mark. So um, as you've enjoyed a long and successful amateur career. I'm keen to get stuck into your MMA flashlights. Otherwise, I could be here all day asking questions. So let's begin with your MMA debut in March 2016, a week after Conor McGregor versus Nate Diaz won at UFC 196. What do you remember about that fight? And bearing in mind the magnitude of the show, did that get you excited for your fight? Yeah, 100%. At the time, when I first kind of started it, fighting MMA, or competing in MMA, Conor McGregor was the guy. Yeah, I mean, everyone's watching Conor McGregor. Everyone's chatting shit. Everyone's doing his style. He's spinning kicks. He's hook kicks. He's wee kind of prancing his feet, leaning back, hitting the straight and stuff. So I remember going to that fight, obviously, I'm inspired by Conor McGregor. So I'm just sitting like this. Obviously, I'm not a southpaw at the time. I'm orthodox, but... I'm just sitting, I'm trying to get the guy with the straights and the uppercuts and try to get the walk-off KO. I remember getting the KO, jumping in the cage, hiking on Conor McGregor and stuff, putting my hands up, man. So it definitely, it definitely inspired me. Like, everybody, it's hard not to be inspired by somebody like Conor McGregor who's done so much for the game. And he was such a dominant fighter on his way up. So definitely that inspired me before that Brilliant. Fight. Brilliant. And uh, you must have been 17 or so when you made your MMA debut. Before that, you, you competed in K1 and was also undefeated in Muay Thai. So why did you eventually choose MMA? 
So the story is, when I first started training, I heard that somebody, well, just go, I'll tell you how I started MMA in the first place, right? So I've always wanted to try it. Mum was trying to get me in. I was trying to find a place. And then some boy at my school was apparently going to an MMA club. And I was like, what? You're going to this MMA club? I was like, you're taking me away. He's like, I'm going tonight. I was like, sweet, I'm with you. He ended up picking me up. We go there. And I started MMA. So I started MMA for the first few weeks. And then I, but that was an MMA class. I was seeing after it, guys were sparring, they had the gear on, they were fighting each other. And I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to be fighting each other. So it turned out I could only spar if I started doing Muay Thai. So I pied the MMA and started doing Muay Thai. And then that's where my career went down. That Muay Thai, that's why I started fighting Muay Thai. And then I eventually uh, transitioned back into MMA. So really, and I started MMA first, but I wanted to spar. So I, I started see. doing Muay Thai, went down that route and had a career in that. And did you compete in K1 too? I never competed in K1. I think I only competed in Muay Thai. It was C class and then I fought A class when I was in Thailand. I went to Thailand to train and I fought when I was over there. I wow. I went to Thailand twice I, before. Wow. Now. What gym did you um, uh, go to in, in, in Thailand? It's Sassy Prapa in Bangkok. A great gym, man. Some really, really good Thai fighters out there. Eh? Rung Gravy is one of the best. You've wow. Got Boo, you've got Malapet, Sassy Prapa. These are kind of like, if you know Thai, you know these guys are solid. So I went, I've been to that gym and I've been to Kiat Pont Tip, which is, you know, if you know John Pop in Leeds? No, I don't. He's got a kind of, so John Pop's a great coach down in Leeds. Uh, but he's got a gym where he came from in, in a bank, uh, it's also Bangkok in Thailand, uh, like Kiat Pont Tip. I went there as well. That was, a, that was a great gym, tremendous gym, man. Some really, really good fighters out there as well. So I've been twice and I've trained twice. So it was Sassy Prapa and Kiat Pont Tip, man, but they're, Top class gems every time. Wow. And and did he give you flashbacks of uh, kickboxer? Definitely, man. <laughs> See, you know, man. That was crazy, man. Oh, yeah. A mad place. It is Thailand crazy. Is awesome. uh, there's always something place. going on, isn't it? There's there's always something oh, going awesome on. Place, man. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I bet it is. Oh, mate. Oh, that's nuts. Like, uh, yeah. You need, you, you need to actually go to Thailand to know what I mean when I tell you, like, that the place is crazy. Like, you can do anything. Yeah, yeah it's like a yeah. land that is just such a crazy place, but at the same time, some experience is where I was. Yeah, probably my favorite country ever. If I could go anywhere right now, I'd be in Thailand. Mate. Facts. Yeah, it's that yeah. good. Yeah, it's be you've got the, beautiful. You've got the busy nightlife and stuff. Yeah, you've got the malls and stuff, but then you've got the islands where you can go and chill. It's got everything you need, man. You can train. You've got all these good gyms. It really is a really really nice place. Good food as well. Oh man, the food's amazing! I so I, when I was there, man, I was just eating curries every day. So breakfast, yeah. lunch, dinner, I'd eat a curry. I've tried yeah. every Thai curry there is. Yeah, I mean, I was just eating curries all the time. Would be rude not to, eh? No, oh, it's great, man. The, <laughs> food's great, man. the foods, the foods, tremendous, man. It's a great place. Yeah, and um, Mark, you won your MMA debut by KO in only yeah. two minutes and eighteen seconds. Could it have gone any better? Nah, definitely not. Nah. That's, <laughs> what, that's, what kinda, that's what I'd visualised. That's what I'd expected. Uh, I trained hard for that fight. Went in hoping to get the KO. Obviously got the KO. I jumped in the cage. I was buzzing. I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Right out after it, my friends, man. That was a, that was a big win. That was a, it's cool. Obviously, fighting Muay Thai, going to MMA, and just getting that first win out of the way, it was, it was definitely a great experience. Yeah, it was and a big deal. And a better, like you said, getting the KO. Yeah, brilliant. So, Mark, let's now flash forward by eight months and to Bonfire Night in 2016, where you got your first crack at MMA Gold for the promotion you made your debut with, Headhunters FC. You faced, at the, at the, at the time, fellow Muay Thai champion and 4 and 2 competitor, Nathan Jessimir. How much were you relishing the challenge and opportunity? When I think back, I probably wasn't ready for a title shot. But I think I was, it was a two and one. I was had my yeah. I just had a loss before that, so I was literally fighting for the title off a loss. Probably shouldn't have been getting the opportunity to fight for the title, but I did, and I took it with, with both hands. I was like, I was buzzing to get in there and actually fight for it. Especially that was my kind of home show. I thought I'll go in there, I get the belt. And I was fighting, they said, Nathan Jesmer was a Muay Thai champion. So preparing for that fight, I thought, nice one. I'm going to be able to go in here and we're just going to trade. And we'll see who's, we'll see who's better, you know what I mean? We'll just trade in the middle and we'll see who's better. 
this is what I was expecting. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm coming in here thinking this Muay Thai is he's, he's a WBC Muay Thai champion. Straight away, the guy's shooting on me, man. Oh, yeah. you're a wrestler. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, fuck this, man. And at that time, man, obviously my first loss, and this my se- that's been my second loss, my wrestling was dog meat, man, terrible. I didn't even try and get up or that. I would just try and play from guard. So obviously getting taken down and losing the three rounds, I was gutted, especially because I wanted to just trade. That's why I expected him to come in and just obviously bang it with me. But that wasn't the case, man. So it was a, it was a better one for me to lose, especially on my home show again and yeah. got my chance at gold do you know what I mean so yeah that is what it is I learned from that definitely you did learn so as as you just briefly touched on there Mark um unfortunately you lost the decision but you literally took zero damage in a fight your opponent was hell-bent on taking you down and lying on top of you for most of the three rounds how frustrating was it to lose in that fashion and what lessons were you were you able to take away that night I was super frustrated, man, just to be held down for three rounds and someone sitting your guard and not really try and pass or try and strike. But to be honest, at that time, I never really knew much get-ups or that. I wouldn't, I'd wouldn't. only try and throw a few subs off my back. I mind in that fight, actually. I'm sure I got an inverted triangle at one point. And I was on top of him and I was like, I was just so green, man. I didn't know what to do or finish him. I had his back at one point as well. And I fell off. Like, I was just so green. So I've took so much away from that, especially... The grappling aspects and try not to rush things just take the time get position and then get the finish and just being more composed in certain positions and especially just try to get up man see mma back then i feel like when you when i got taken down i'll just sit there and try and throw something on my back you can't be doing that you need to try to get up you know what i mean you need to at least try and get up because throwing subs off your back is fucking you know i was going to get us up if you keep trying it yeah you know i mean you need to try and get up and then create scrambles and then yeah. get back to the feet where i'd like to be you know what I mean? Yeah, correct. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. And just it's to prove, man. oh, it must have been. It must have been. And just to prove how much damage you took, I believe you were scheduled to fight again in two weeks against Emmett McCracken from Northern Ireland. But that fight got cancelled. Is that correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. Dead. I, I, can't, I, I didn't know the opponent. I knew I was matched in the show. Last yeah. time I never really know my opponent until it's close at the time. But I was I was matched. Me and Kira supposed to be going over to compete. I can't remember how, uh, why we never fought. I can't really remember the reason, but I was fine. Yeah, you were fine. I, I was fine after that. I never took much damage at all, man. Let's show the guy no, sat No, nothing. I might no get damage. The cage and I was raging. I was like, I feel like I've not even fought. I've just been sitting on my back. I'm not tired. There's nothing wrong with me. I was like, I was was, bit upset with that one. Yeah, that's devastating, man. That's that's hard to take. That's hard to take. So um, I now want to flash forward, Mark, by seven months. And the guy that we mentioned earlier, um, when you faced Michael Quinn in June 2017, a fight that still represents your last loss almost four years ago. It was another opponent who was determined to take you down in order to nullify your striking ability. Do you feel looking back at those times, your opponents may have seen your grappling as an area to target? Yeah, definitely. That's the... I feel like once I get in there, it doesn't matter who it is, you could be a striker. As soon as we start striking, you're going to be shooting. You're going to be shooting for your life, you know what I mean? That's always been the case. And I feel like a lot of these guys, especially my, like my first three losses, these guys exploited my weaknesses here. This is something I should have been working at the time at the gym, my get-ups. Working off my, I was definitely working stuff off my back, but at the time I wasn't trying to get up. I was never ever trying to get up, which is fucking stupid. Yeah, you know I mean? I should be trying to get up and get back to the feet but uh, these guys definitely exploited uh, my weaknesses at the time that was just taking me down yeah and after that fight with Michael Mark you were on a free fight losing skids were there any doubts creeping into your mind at the time and if not how did you keep your head up stay resolute and essentially retain that belief I think it'd be hard not to be I think it'd be hard not to have any doubts after three losses back to back. After going two and all, two KOs, undefeated Muay Thai career, and then having three losses back to back, man, it was. I had to really re- reevaluate what was happening and what I was doing with myself. Yeah, you know I mean, I, I'd give everything to the sport, but I feel like at that one time where I had the three losses back to back, my head wasn't in it as much. I think I, mean, I thought I was a man. Yeah, you know I mean, I was away partying and stuff, and I was losing fights. I mean, I lost one fight 
I lost actually at the main point and I was right out partying that night. I think after that loss, I went away to Magaluf, partied, but when I came back, I was like, I cannot keep doing this. This is not me, yeah. You know I mean, I want to be great, I want to do great. There's something I need to change. I need to change how I look at sport, I need to change how I commit myself to the sport, I need to change something anyway in order to start getting back on the on the win streaks and getting getting the wins in, man. But definitely I learned so much from the three losses. That's definitely one of the most if not the most beneficial thing that's ever happened to me in my career is losing the three losses, especially back to back like that. Because like you said, I was really doubting myself. I was like, am I, am I really? Am I going to be as great as I want to be? Can I be as great as I want to be? I'm just lost three back to back. And I was like, Kim, I need to use this, these three losses to, to define me. This will be a turning point from here on out. I'm going to go on a win streak now. I'm never going to lose again. I'm going to go, I'm going to come up myself with this. With every fibre of my being, and then everyone's just getting smoked. Once I tune in, once I lock in, they're all getting it, and that's what's happened since, man. That's exactly what happens. That's exactly what happened. Wow, I got chills from that boy. Jeez. Yeah. So we now enter 2018, a year that I would consider your breakthrough MMA year. Is that fair to say? Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. That was a great year, man. That was a great year. Yeah, great year. And your first fight in 2018 was versus Nathan Hughes and a week after UFC fight night 127 in London a card that featured your teammates Stevie Ray and Danny Henry and also Scotsman Paul Craig do you remember that show to be honest man I wasn't keeping tabs on that show no I never watched it. I never I've still never seen any of the fights because obviously I was really? training with them guys at the time but no I know I love to see Scottish guys do well, but I never really tuned in on that fight now, nah, on that show, I mean, and seen any of the guys compete. I think it was a great night for everybody that night, but I never tuned yeah. in on Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, Danny uh, uh, Danny won, Paul Craig won. Is that when he, is that when he choked out that Hakeem? Uh, yeah, um, it, uh, via guillotine choke. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah, and unfortunately, Stevie Ray lost uh, a split decision. Who was that against? Uh, K uh, Cajun Johnson. Ah, oh, that's it. Yeah, and that that, that card was headlined by uh, Vadum and Volkov. Oh, nice. It was a good card. It was a very good card. Mm. Yeah, very good card. So then, uh, back to the fight with Hughes. Uh, what did it feel like making the fight poster? Good. That that was a big fight for me, especially, and a big fight for Scotland. At the time, it was a massive domestic fight. Nathan Hughes was like myself. It's funny because right now Nathan Hughes is training with us. He's a great, good, really good friend of mine. Like one of my best mates at the gym. It's funny that we fought, but at the time, obviously, we never liked each other. Well, not no, we never liked each other. But he was a young guy doing well on the sports show. Was that he was not in guys out? I was not in guys out. I thought we we're eventually going to fight at one point. And obviously, I'd had my three loss streak, and then I had one fight. I'd won it, and I was matched against Nathan. I was, this is a big fight, man. This is a good fight. And it's fights like that where you've got a great opponent. Where, you, yeah. where it really lights that fire inside you, man. So I trained like fuck for that, man. I trained crazy amounts, man, and put the serious work in. And obviously went and had a fight. It was a great fight. Good back and forth fight. And people saw something say that that is one of the best domestic fights in Scotland. Like me and Nathan went for it for three rounds, man. It was a great, great fight. A key factor in that fight that I felt set the tone was your grappling. Early on, you managed to get in the, uh, managed to get in the underhooks tossing him to the cage and essentially controlling him from that point on. Could you feel the confidence and the belief draining out of him? Yeah, definitely. I feel like I was just a bit more physical than Nathan at the time. Nathan's a yeah. big guy. He's, he's, he's taller than me. Yeah. But I feel like I was more muscular strength, so I, kind of, I was more physical at the time. And, uh, you could say I, I started to wear them. Yeah, just because, like I said, I was training hard for that fight. I was so motivated for that fight, so I put serious work in. And I knew I wasn't going to come in there and gas out. I was willing to go round after round and keep that pace up. And that's what I tried to do. Yeah, I mean, I have to say in that particular fight, Mark, you looked like you were having a lot of fun. You were really loose and your timing was crisp. Mm -hmm. that, was a, that was a great fight. I hate to speak about it because me and Nathan are so close now. Like he's one of my bros, you know what I mean? But we'll, sure. we'll sit and chat about it in the gym and that. It was a great fight back and forth, like, Nathan's solid. Like Nathan will be smoking amateurs when he comes back. I'm telling you that right now. That guy's solid. Like, and one of my great my great teammates. So, but the fight we had, great fight. One of my best performances to date. 
And yeah, I, I definitely. Suppose, Nathan, yeah, I mean, because he's opponent, he has, because he's good, he has, he brought the best at me. So that's all yeah. I have to say about that. Like. Okay, fair enough. That's not, that's, not, that's no problems at all. So at the end of the second round, it definitely seemed like he tapped. And if he did tap, do you put any blame on the referee for not seeing it due to the position he took up? I, I'm sure you tapped. I'm sure that's why I let go. Or, or was, it the, I'm sure, was it the end of the round, actually? And and right at the end of the second round. The round. So I had the, I had the choke on. But aye, I'm sure I'm sure he tapped, but it's my job to not let go until the ref pulls me off. Yeah, I mean, so that's, I need to take accountability for that. Yeah, I mean, so I kind of be annoyed at the ref. I need to go back to my corner. I need to come back and just do the same again. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I need to take accountability for that. I should have never let go of the sub. Yeah, that's what you're taught. Never let go until the ref pulls you off. You know what I mean? That's yeah. That kind of rookie error. That was another lesson. Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah. That's what the amateurs are about. Yeah, just building up experience, man. That's definitely. it. Definitely. That's it. Well, it didn't matter. You got the job done in the third and final rounds, claiming your second win in the space of a month. Did those two victories help to reaffirm your confidence? Definitely, just the win against Nathan alone. Like Nathan was knocking guys out, man. He's a solid fighter, and then that's, that's big domestic fight, and then going in and beating him. I was like, I'm back where I am. I'm the man. Yeah, I mean, I was feeling myself again. I was like, let's do this. Let's go for it. Let's go for a run, and let's see how far I can take this. You took it very far. So, Mark, Cage Warriors Academy now comes calling, and they put you up against Marcus Lewis. My guest on episode 15, who is a decorated karate world champion. That was certainly set to be your biggest test in MMA. Would you also extend that to your combat sports career? Uh, just probably just fighting that type of style. I'd never really fought that type of style before. So it was a big test at the time. But now I train with guys that are like that. So... I'm a lot more used to it, but at the time it was a big test. It, you know, it was a big show. It wasn't. It wasn't really massive. The opponent. It was never the opponent. Like oh, I don't real? focus on the opponent. I never do. I was okay. just being on Cage Warriors. The name Cage Warriors Academy. For me, that was a pivotal moment in my career. Getting down to Liverpool. They flew us. There. I mean, they took us down there. We were staying there. We fought in the Echo and stuff like that in the auditorium in the Echo. That was a definitely a big, a big point in my career. So. I definitely grasped that moment with both hands as well. That was a, that was a great experience, that going down to Liverpool and getting the win in, down there. I'd actually fought previous to that. So I had Nathan Hughes. I fought a couple of weeks after. I fought down in Portsmouth against Denny Sheehan. Beat him. And then I fought Marcus. But I had all these fights booked. By the time I fought Nathan Hughes, I had all these fights booked. And at the time I was matched to fight Marcus Lewis, I think I was still free and free or something. So these guys are coming in. They're they're they've booked me thinking they're gonna they're gonna bring him in. He's gonna lose just so Marcus can get the title shot. That wasn't happening. No way, man. I I knew what I was going down to Liverpool for, man. It was to get that gold, man. Go and make a statement, prove to myself that I'm as good as I want to be and that I can be, and just go and get in, getting in contention for the title. Did that give you extra motivation? Sort of believing that you were you were set up to be like the guy that Marcus was was meant to be. Yeah, definitely. I but just having the three fights booked, I was like, I never really thought much about any of the opponents ever. I was just so focused on myself. I knew I had three. I knew I had three fights booked. Like I had Nath and I had Denny had and I had Marcus. But once they were booked, I did not kind of pay any attention to like the opponents. I just focused on myself, getting myself better, my strengths, and then going in. Getting the win every time was there. It was uh, it was great, but I then bringing me in as the as like a guy to get beat. That definitely yeah. motivated me. I was like, especially him having me. He had some crowd man. They were loud when I got in there, man. They were screaming something like Mushin Kai, Mushin Kai, like his karate team or something. So they were screaming that. I was like, and then my walkout song came on. I was like, fuck this. This guy's getting smoked. I could not give a fuck. So I'm walking it there. I'm feeling myself, man. Put on a show. And silence the crowd. So silence the crowd, and it was a great night, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god. All right. So oh, I'm getting gas, boy. So the fight against Marcus was to decide who would face <laughs> then champion. 
and fellow Scotsman Kieran Connor for the Cage Warriors Northwest Academy lightweight title. How difficult was it not to look ahead to what would have been an exciting derby between you and Kieran? I wasn't. I never knew. Like we never really knew if Kieran was going to win that fight. You know what I mean? So I knew. I just knew that I beat Marcus. I'm fighting for a title. I don't know if I'm fighting Kieran Connor or I'm fighting that Blanita because they were right. fighting the same night as we were. Yeah, after you. So whoever won that would would be the then champion. So I wasn't really yeah. focused on who won the fight. Like I know Kieran obviously he's up. He trains up in a. I think it's in um, a or Ab- I know Aberdeen. Of him. Aberdeen, I. I knew of him. I knew he was a champ. I had no problems fighting him. But at the time, I wasn't really focused on him at all or Belina because I never knew who was going to win. And like I said, on my fights, I never ever focus on guys. I just focus on myself and what I can control. That's always been the case. Right. Okay. And given that you did beat Marcus, can you explain why we didn't see you fight for what eventually turned out to be the vacant title? I don't know, man. I think that's a little bullshit, to be honest. They were telling me they can't get me matched. Uh, Kieran, well, Kieran Connor went pro, right? So apparently he Correct. went pro. Yeah, it was a vacant title. Or something. The guy that just lost and let him fight for the title again. But the guys were like, ah, we can't get you matched. We're going to keep trying. And it just fell through. Nothing ever happened. They never even gave us any names. And then a couple of months later, Marcus Lewis is fighting for the title. You want to know why? Like I'm saying, they brought me in to lose to him. They wanted him to get the title. Because he's scouts, because he's for Liverpool, they wanted him to get it, you know what I mean? They never really wanted me to fight for it. And I think that's how it is, so... It leaves a, a better taste in my mouth that as well, because I would love to be the Cage Warriors... Uh, is it South West champion or something? I'd love to be the Cage Warriors Academy champion. I'd love to have that belt. It's a nice belt and just an extra one to the collection. Oh, man. I feel like they've done, they done, done me dirty on that one. Yeah, it sounds that way because they're such a very, you know, they're such a professional organization. You won that fight fair and square. You 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 got the finish. Um, you know, you looked really, really impressive. Um, and to not to not get your shot is uh yeah, it's very, very, very disappointing. Yeah, it is, man. But it is what it is. You know what I mean? Fucking yeah, man. their loss for sure. Too That's late, their man. loss. That's a shame, man. So coming back to the fight with Marcus Mark, early on in the fight, you got hit by a spectacular spinning head kick, which Marcus said he threw, not thinking it would land. I wasn't actually expecting to land the kick. I just wanted to go near his face. I didn't expect him to foolishly step onto it, which is what he sort of did. Yeah, I was, at, I was just at the perfect range. I didn't, I wasn't, I was throwing it. If it hit him, it hit him cool. I wasn't like, I'm going to spin and kick him now. I was just throwing it to put it out there, like, look, lad, I'm about, I'm here, my legs are active, we're ready to go, just sort of a threat. And then it hit him, and I went, oh, shit, I hit him. But credit to you, Mark, you reacted very well by clinching up and backing him up against the cage. Was that to recover your senses, or was that all part of the game plan, or even both? The spin heel kick was a peach, man. I was never, ever stunned, though. I've, I've watched that video back thousands of times because everyone was like, oh, well, you knocked it. I was like, nah. It's like he hit me on like the like the neck or something and it literally just knocked me over. So if you watch, I'm in, like watching the video, slowing it down, replaying it. I get up faster than he does. Because he falls after he throws that kick. I get up faster than he does and I'm ready to go again. He comes in, try to sm- he smothered his strike, so he's came in right away. I've just took the initiative and clinched up and worked from there. And I think that was kind of the the process and the, the full fight. We'd both get in and we'd be striking and one of us would just smaller our strikes and we'd get into the clinch. I think it was never really a thought process, I'm going to try and clinch him here. It was just the sloppiness and like the the greenness of us just getting into getting into the clinch by smothering our strikes. Right. Not keeping the not, not not keeping the distance and just kind of falling into it. So and then I worked for there. I'm happy to work for there and just obviously grind them out. Yeah, you did. You did. So, yeah, in the second round, it was pretty much, as you say, Mark, pretty much more of the same. Locking him up against the cage, landing several knees to the thigh and shutting down his kicking ability, which is obviously his strongest assets. Was that also part of the game plan? Nah, like I said, man, I, I would 
if you watch the fight back, I would. There was times I'm like, come on, let's go. I want to stand and I want to strike with you. Um, let's see. Really? Yeah, I mean, let's see what you've got. Really? With I Marcus? I, I, I don't care what style you've got. I feel like my striking, man, is just next level. So you see, I'm throwing low kicks, we're, we're striking. But like I said, the sloppiness, I feel like I'd throw a couple of strikes and I would just fall into my. I maybe get too close and fall into the clinch. And instead of just stopping the clinch, I would just work from there, get the body lock, stuff like that, try and get my drags. I'd obviously be able to snap him over on that. And I feel like there was sometimes, obviously, amateur, you can't need the head. But if I could need him with the head, that would have been done way earlier. I actually mentioned that to him. I told him that in the fight. We were, we were chatting in the fight. As no man, way. I, I didn't see head, that. Be no yeah, way you chat, did. Man. If you see, we're, we're chatting and he actually speaks to the ref because I'm like, I could need you with the head. And I bring it up and the ref's like that. Ah, that's right. It's That's actually right. the ref. The ref, yeah, the ref Neil, just passed away there. Yeah. That God, referee, man. God rest his ref. soul. Yeah, Neil. Yeah, great referee. Yeah, unbelievable referee. Ref, what and my fights, man. He was always a good and fair ref. Very fair ref. Yeah, he was. Yeah, um, um, unbelievable. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't realize you were both chatting in there, but I do remember the bit where he called over Neil, and said, "Yeah, what was that about?" Was that was that it's a low me. blow? I'm sure, I'm sure I said something like I could knee you to the head, and I think I, I think I just show the knee, and then he was like, oh, and then the referee comes over and is like, no chance, because there's plenty of times where I could have carried them over from the body lock, and I could easily just rip the knee into the head. There's actually in the, there's a moment in the fight where we're in the clinch and I throw a knee to the head. Luckily, it brings his head up. I've just done the obviously muscle memory, this instinct. I threw a knee at the middle, and just missed him. Luckily, because I obviously I trained knee, I, I trained knees to the head, so. I've just threw it in the heat of the moment. Obviously, you can't be trying to knee people at the head in an amateur fight because you'll obviously get DQ'd, but I've just done it instinctually and nearly hit him. But I made Whoa. sure I told him, I like, if, I, if this was a real fight and I could knee at the head, you'd be done, man. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> Love this. I'm so glad I came up with these questions, man. Right. So you unbelievably managed to submit Marcus in the last minute of the third round via rear naked choke. However, you could have easily continued with the ground and pounds as the referee was close to stopping it. Why did you choose at that moment to go for the submission? I believe he gave me the submission. I believe this, I was peppering him with the strikes. I was raining them down. They were heavy shots, but I feel like he put his neck up. He wasn't wanting any more of it, man. So, you know, when they give you it, you may as well just take it. And I'm glad I got the finish, man. I imagine I went to decision. I'm not in finishes. I've... I've got a 100% finish rate. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to lose that. So I've took the finish and got it done any way that I can. Wow. Wow. And uh, did you revel in the moment of silencing the crowd? Because you jumped on oh. the cage. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. I yeah. jumped out right in the cage about that. I had a few friends that came down to Liverpool, obviously, to support me. He had this, a big, massive crowd. And obviously... His crowd were loud as anything, obviously, but to silence them was a great, was a great moment, man. Jump on the cage and just revel in it, man. That was great. And being an echo in that as well, was a, like I said, it was, a mass, it was a big show, a pivotal moment for me in my career to fight on Cage Warriors. Beat the hometown guy, jump on the cage, obviously, and have just a great time, man. It was a, a great experience, even just being down in Liverpool. It was class. Yep, correct. And can you remember the buzz that followed you? As we touched on, Marcus is a very high-level martial artist, so that win must have helped to get your name out there. Yeah, I think that especially down south, I was like, obviously, most of my fights had been up in Scotland. Yeah. Until I came down and fought Denny, and then I came down and fought Marcus. So that's two fights down south. I feel like I was starting to get a name, and I started to get like, followers, people reach out to me and that from down south. Obviously, up in Scotland, the people know me, but down down south, it definitely got my name out there. And obviously, right. being the hometown guy, that was it was great, man. I definitely, I'd say skyrocketing me up there a bit. Really, and just being being around the show, man. That show was great. Like I remember seeing like Danny Danny Hot Chocolate was there. I can't remember his sick name. Um, he was in the UFC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he trains. He trains at uh, Aspire in in That's in it. Liverpool. Aye, loads of guys kicking about Paddy Pimblet stuff like that. There's loads of big high level guys here. I mean, you get the win there, and that was great. Yeah, you know I mean, it was a great experience. Oh, um, Roberts. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. Danny, Danny Hot Chocolate Roberts. That's the guy. I mean, seen him, seen loads of guys. It was cool. Yeah. Wow. And uh, on the show, 
Marcus admitted that he just wasn't ready to face you and essentially thanked you for making him a better all-round fighter. To be honest, I was slightly happy for the... I'm not happy. No one's ever happy at getting beat. So I'm not going to sit here and say I was made up at getting beat because I obviously weren't. But the way I got beat and getting beat itself was both... First, it was a lesson. Because if you see now, most of my fights, I'm pretty much... I've took what he's done and I've ended up using it to too much of an extent, really. But, like, if you watch that fight back, to be honest, in moments, if you actually watch, there's moments I didn't... We'd work on the ground so much. It was our, our own short-sightedness a little bit to not think. He might just want to push us against the cage. We always we thought, he's going to get us down to the ground. And Marcus is ready to get up. So it was unprepared in this, basically. What do you feel separates you from the rest? My mindset, that 100% has to be my mindset, the way I look at the game. And not only the game, the way I look at life and uh, work in the mind. Like, I believe you work the mind more than you work the body. Like, the body will go where the mind will take it. So, I spend, when I'm not training, I train twice a day. When I'm not training, I'm reading books, I'm meditating, I'm trying to work my brain and neuroplasticity and teach myself new stuff, you know what I mean? Or I'm studying fights. And that's what, separates me and what will separate me when I'm one of the greatest of all time and I'll be telling everyone this it's a mindset man I, I, all I do is train my mind and that's what book what are you reading me. what book are you reading at the moment because you're you're always uh, I'm reading, uh, yeah they're Daring Greatly by Brenny Brown but man I, I go through books like it's gone into fashion I, I read every day so I'm constantly going through books I've got a great book selection and Love I only that. read books, I only read like self-development books, self-help books, psychology books, books that will benefit me. I've not got time to be reading stories about yeah, novels. Shit never happened, yeah, yeah. So Good for you, man. Inspiring and motivating, and I'm gonna get something, you know what I mean? Well done, man. I love that. Well done. That's brilliant, Mark. So let's now move on to your first fight of 2019, which was initially meant to be James Bunting, a guy yeah. we will get on to later. But instead, you faced Swede Ola Jakobsen. I may be wrong, but was that your first fight representing high level MMA? Yeah, spot on, man. That was my first fight representing higher level on on top promotions. That was the one, yeah. On top, yeah, on top. So, um, why the change to higher level, and has and has the move benefited your MMA development? Oh man, the the, the difference in me. Training at higher level right now, it's night and day. Eh? So what happened is we, we made the move, me, me and my fellow teammate, who was at Headhunters, Keir Harvey. Eh, young boys training, but from Falkirk, but from Falkirk, obviously, so we were training at Headhunters, but like, he'd just turned pro, I was getting ready for a fight, and then we were like, we were the only two guys in. We were the only two guys in sometimes, man, and we're like, what the fuck, this is crazy, we need to, we need training partners. We need committed coaches and training staff to to get the best out of us and obviously commit to us so we can obviously chase our dreams because we made it vocal that we wanted to be great, we wanted to do well and we just like that reciprocation from our coaches and everybody else around us. But it's hard when not everyone else is as committed as you used to. Not everyone else is really there to be a fighter. They're just there for like a fitness class and they just happen to be all right so they can jump in with us now and then. But we were the only kind of two active fighters were in the gym at the time and we're like, we need to go somewhere else and a uh, higher level is the place to be man if you're in Scotland and you don't train at a higher level I don't know what you're doing because like you say we've got the guys in the UFC and stuff like that we've had James Dillon's had multiple world champions He's guys at the pinnacle of the sport you know what I mean so we made that move we feel like that was the right move to make and man I do not regret it once I do not regret it at all man my, the development I've made since since joining high level is crazy, and especially in my grappling, man. Wait till you see me grapple next. I cannot wait. The grappling up there and the wrestling stuff like that. Oh, it's next, next, next level shit, man. I can't wait to perform again and just show everybody how much I've developed, even since my last fight. Brilliant. And so, yeah, I've got, I've got to ask you at this point, then, Mark. Back in July 2020, you managed to get out to UFC Fight Island supporting uh, teammate Danny the Hatchet Henry, who was part of the blockbuster UFC 251 cards, headlined by Kamara Usman and Jorge Masvidal. Describe to us the experience 
and how it provided you with a glimpse of the future. That was a great experience for me, man. And, and that experience came about, obviously, because I, I trained with Danny. But James, James is smart that way. He's, he knows where I'm going to be. He knows what I'm going to accomplish. So he's brought me along to get a glimpse. You know what I mean? To see it, to experience it before I get there. So Clever. being out there in Abu Dhabi for the first fight island was a madness, I know. man. It was crazy. That was oh, a big chartered flight and all that. Oh, flying first class. It was crazy to be out there and see all these big names. I was like, I seen Jorge, I seen Kamara, I seen Aldo, I seen Peter Yan, seen everybody that was on the car. I seen them all. And just see, Max Holloway, Volkanovski, oh. just seen them all, sized them up and stuff. I was like, this is where I meant to be, man. That was a great experience. I guess what I'm thinking about right now, man. But yeah, me too, there. man. Me too. The first fight island. That was madness, man. Because... It's just like obviously I watch embedded, I watch the countdowns, I watch all this stuff, but I only watch it because this is where I want to be. So I can visualize it and that when I do my visualization and where I can so I can see where I want to be. But to be there in real life and experience it, oh it's a it's total different, but it's totally different, man. Being there. And obviously walking out with Danny, having the fight and stuff like that in the corner, oh it was crazy, man. That that'll definitely be one of the the best experiences of my life, definitely. Yeah, that's that, that was that's very shrewd by um by James, eh? Uh, James is smart like that. James knows exactly what he's yeah. doing, man. He's he's a few steps ahead of everybody, man, when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah, I mean yeah. he's had like he's had like a uh, amateur guys that haven't fought. He make sure that like kind of regional shows and they yeah. go through the corner, they go through the motion so they see it and they experience it so they know what it's like when they fight. And it was exactly me taking taking me to the taking me to the UFC with them. Clever. Great, man. Yeah, man. So in the first round uh, versus Ola, it appeared like you landed a clean jab, which was the start of your combination punches. But the ref stopped it for what I believe was an eye poke, causing some confusion. Can you clarify what the uh, ref warned you about, please, Mark? I uh, said so the ref never warned me. The ref actually stopped the fight, man. He'd waved the fight off. So I thought I'd won. So yeah, because you like, put your hands up. Won. Yeah, you put yeah, your hands up. That. I, I thought I'd won, but then the ref was like, actually, I might have made a shit decision. So we need to fight again. But the funny thing is that ref's actually known for making the most ridiculous calls. Ha, 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 yeah, ha, I mean, ha, so he's called the fight off. I think I've won. He's like, yeah, you need to fight again. And then, well, obviously, again, he, he robbed me in a walk-off KO. Oh, I man. I peach in right hand, slept him. Oh, I man. Away. The referee's just like doesn't have a clue what he's doing. I need oh, to go back man. and have an extra few strikes that are unnecessary. But unnecessary. Yeah. Un unnecessary. I'm yeah. taking a walk-off anyway. That's what I'm calling it. A walk-off KO because he got slept. <laughs> he did. I mean, you must have been pissed at that. Uh, I, I was happy to get the win, but of course, the, but for him to do that to me, obviously with the walk-off, I was like, come on, man. This ridiculous. Ridiculous. I don't fight. think um, even for my opponent, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have to give him the unnecessary shots. He was out cold. You need to put the fighter first. Yeah, you know I mean. Yeah, I think he must. He must have gone to the same referee and score as um, Mario Yamasaki. <laughs> 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 Without a single scratch on you, the call came to fight for the vacant, made for the cage, lightweight strap. Four weeks later, against top amateur Farouk, representing Manchester top team. How soon after your fight with Ola was this opportunity put on your radar? I think it was actually March before. Like I said, I like to have a, a few fights booked, man. Oh, so really? I just run through them all. I think it but, it was only, but it was only four weeks later. So you, you yeah, were confident? Yeah. Oh, always, man. Like I said, <laughs> I had the fights against Martin... Martin, Denny, and Martin, uh, and, and Marcus Lewis, they were all booked. I know, the I know. Time I thought, the, the, the time I fought uh, Nathan Hughes, they were all booked. I like I like that, like, I like, that, I like that have all my fights kind of booked, and then I'll rest after. You know what I mean? Like a season in a way, so I'll have like three fights and then chill. So I am sure, I'm sure I definitely had that fight booked. I might, I might be wrong, but I'm sure I had that fight booked before I fought Ola. Was it, was it Ola? Yeah. I Ola sure I and, then, and then Farouk. Yeah, yeah, in the fruit. So I'm sure I, I'm sure I had that fight book definitely. But I like okay. I like quick turnarounds, man. Yeah, I like being active. Doesn't yeah. give me a chance to go out and 
yeah. eat shit and get too heavy. I need to be zoned Disciplines. in, locked in, goal-minded, like you said, disciplined, man. So I much prefer yeah. to have fights booked. Yeah, I feel you, man. I feel you. So at this point, you were on a six-fight winning streak and finishing all of your fights. You were the overwhelming favourite. Did you feel any pressure against Farouk? I never actually knew I was a favourite of that man, but like once I've heard the name Farouk, I looked, well, obviously I knew he was Russian. You obviously, if you think of Russian, so this is going to be a hard fight. So once again, I've got a big hard fight here. I trained hard for it. I put some serious work in for it. I, and I ended up getting the win, but I was like, it was a great fight, man. It was a big show as well. Get my, get my first belt, man. That was, that was a, some experience. Yeah. And, uh, he came out throwing bombs, <laughs> much like uh, much like Ola did. Yet again, you just read everything he threw, stayed calm, and waiting to land that killer blow, which of course you did. I guess you agree with Conor McGregor when he says, "But precision beats power, and timing beats speed." Every time, man. Every time. I remember when he he came at me with the bar uh, the barrage of punches. And we clinched for about a half a second. And I think my corner were worried because obviously he just came at me like a bat from hell. I remember saying, I'm all right. Like I looked over his shoulder, I was like, I'm all right. We broke for a second. He came on our barrage. I was, I'm, I'm going to get him here. I threw a nice short right hand. That put him down. And he just, I think he was away with it when he grabbed the single leg. He left his neck out. I cinched up the rear neck of choke. And that was it, signed, sealed, and sent. But um, like I said, I'm, I'm composed in there, especially when it comes to the striking. You can throw whatever you want at me, man. I'm going to bide my time and I'm going to get my shots off. And when I get my shots off, people are going to sleep. <laughs> wow. Love it, man. Love it. So, you, again, you just touched on it there, Mark. So, just like versus Marcus Lewis, you could have continued landing heavy blows. But again, you took the back and went for the rear naked choke, finishing the fight in style. How important is fighting IQ? And is that a quality that's sometimes underrated? Definitely underrated, 100%. I would say fighting IQ is nearly everything, man. You can, you're, you're not gonna, you can get away with being an athlete only for so long. You can get away with being having good like technique only for so long. But IQ is what wins fights. I, IQ is what will make you a champion. Being able to read a fight, set up strikes, set up takedowns, set up submissions, just being a smart fighter, making reads, adjusting. Fight IQ, in my opinion, is everything. It's something that I really am working on right now is just building my fight IQ, setting traps, setting up moves, a few moves ahead, funnel and stuff, you know what I mean? Letting my opponent go down a path that I know he's going to end up, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, I was just watching um, Hot Boxing with uh, Mike Tyson, who had uh, Francis Ngannou. And he said the difference between his first fight with Stipe in 2018 and the fight a couple of weeks ago was his fight IQ. In the first fight, he just rushed forwards. In this fight, he, he, he used his brain more. He was a lot more composed. I was the same, man. I used to be like that. I was athletic, young kid. I could throw punches, kicks. I could throw it all. I was athletic. Yeah, you know I mean, I could do it all. But that's when I actually joined higher level. I was like, you're not going to get away with just being an athlete. These guys are smarter than you, you know what I mean? When I'm striking, they're taking me down. They're doing certain things that I need to make reads on. So, obviously, once I joined higher level, I realised it's a, it's a thinking man's sport. You know what I mean, you need, to be, you need to be thinking at all times. Sweet science. Correct. And just about three years after your first or first MMA fight, or debut, you get your hands on MMA gold. Describe that feeling for us, please, Mark. And what did it mean to you? Oh, that was great to get the win, man. Uh, obviously, we went down to, I think it was Newcastle, it was. 56 second victory. I remember literally throwing my opponent off me unconscious, running right over to my team, jumping on the cage, just fucking being buzzing. And I remember getting the belt and that when I was in the ring, and I was just cheesing. I was like, yes! Because yeah. I visualised it. Before I actually won the title, I would actually go on Made for the Cage Facebook, right? And I would look at photos of the belt just so I seen what it was like. I knew exactly what it was going to be like. I'd visualise it around my waist with the, with the M, the 4, the T and the C. That's how they spell obviously Made for the Cage. I remember visualising every single detail. I knew that belt like the back of my hand. 
I'd visualise it every single day, both it in my diary, stuff like that, with it, seeing it around my waist and then getting it. Oh man, that was a great experience and obviously my first shot at gold. Well, not my first shot at gold, but the first time I actually got a belt, so it was a great experience. First of many. Absolutely. Wow, amazing. And uh, just over a year ago, you got your chance to finally meet James Bunting at On Top 23, a fight that just kept falling through. How much were you finally looking forward to putting all that noise to bed? I didn't anticipate <laughs> fighting James again. I thought, I thought he was going to pull out again, to be honest. But I swear I thought he was going to pull out, but I thought, eh. Hey, and there was a bit of bad blood there at the time, obviously, because we were supposed to fight. He pulled out. But before the fight, I got an interview and all that, and I said I was going to spark him. I remember yeah. seeing him at that. Actually, I remember seeing him at the show that I fought. Yeah. Him, and he was like, "Oh, you're going to spark me, I." I was like, "Hi, I'll spark you if we fight. I'm going to spark you." And then he walked wow. away. Wow. So it was a bit of animosity there, a bit of bad blood, and then I heard that he was posting stuff on Instagram before the fight, saying he's going to squeeze my head like a grape and all that. So then I put one, but I put a post up saying I'm going to batter this cunt. <laughs> and then, uh, I saw it. Almost it was a bit of bad blood going into that fight. And I was a bit more, a bit more buzzing than I usually am before a fight for it. I was mind I was banging my gloves again. I was like, I just cannot wait to get my hands on this guy. I'm never usually like that. Usually I look at it like a sport. I go in, compose, calm. I was still composing calm, don't get me wrong, but I wanted to hurt this guy. I wanted to go in and really put it on him. For all the shit he said, just prove that this guy is not on my level. Because I feel like any time I have a fight, especially a domestic fight, everyone always says, oh, it's a good fight, it's a good fight. And I'm like, you don't say it's a good fight because I'm in it. These guys should do... I'm not trying to be cocky or that. The normal level. You've got to have size, yeah, reach, length. You've got to have some attributes. If you come in any way equal to me, I'm going to rip your whole head off. And that's it. I tell it every time. But I put serious work in. But these guys do not deserve to be on my... Or not on my level. I mean, and that's what I go on to prove each, each and every time. These guys are not on my level. They don't deserve to be in there with me. So I, I make an example. I went in and I... I went through him like... <laughs> smoked him smoked him so yeah so that so at the start of the second rounds you connected with a right hook which sends him back and then a left hook which sends him crashing down at that point both his back and his neck presented itself were you tempted to go for the rear naked choke or were you just enjoying landing those bombs <laughs> yeah i know i know that's a silly question up. i just like getting my hands on that's what i'm all about you enjoyed that? Yeah, that, that was a great fight, man. I start, I actually go yeah. back and watch the video of that fight. I know yeah. what, just the finish and stuff, that was great. Yeah. And uh, once again, you were very efficient with your punches, ending the fight via TKO in round number two. I'm not sure if I've ever seen you so euphoric after a fight. That one clearly meant a lot. And as we discussed, right? Like I said, die, man, that was a big fight. There was a lot of animosity there. Now, I like, I like James now. I said to him after, I was like, no bad blood. Like, good. Mate, it was a, a sport and he, he got the best of me. Yeah, I mean, he, being a good opponent, like I said, when I fight good opponents, I feel like I always rise to the occasion. He's a good opponent. I can't take that away from him, but he got the best version of me that night. And obviously going in, getting the finish the way I did, putting the heart on, I got up and I was buzzing, man. I watched that. That video is iconic, man. That video's got to do the rounds for the years to come, man. It's a great video of me getting up, man, banging my chest, going to see all my all my, fa all my pals and all that that came to support me, man. It was like, that was a wicked night. Yeah, that was only like 14, 14 months ago, man. Crazy, man. I know, so crazy. Like I know, I know, I know. So that brings me on. Unfortunately, you know what denied us from seeing you for a further six months inside a cage. This is number one bullshit. Obviously, you kept on perfecting your crafts. And as we discussed earlier, you made it out to Fight Island in Abu Dhabi. What were your initial plans heading into 2020? To be active, man. That's always my plan, just to be active and get as much fights as I can. Eh? I'm always just trying to stack the wins up, man. Obviously, I wanted to go pro last year. But obviously, coronavirus sets everybody back. So, I might I still get some fights in, so I'm happy with that. I might still get uh, some competition in. But as 2020 as a whole, for it wasn't the best for competing, but for learning and progress, man, I made some amount of progress in that, in that year. It wasn't like a year off for me. 
I might have been a year off competing, but I made some serious leaps and bounds in my technique and in my development as a fighter. Okay, and now, Mark, we move on to your most recent fight with uh, my guest on episode 14, Teddy Stringer, and possibly the next heir to the amateur number one lightweight throne at Celtic Gladiator 27. That one was played out in front of no crowds. How was that experience for you? That was a, that was a mad experience, man, the first, my first fight in front of no fans. I quite enjoyed it, though. Uh, Intimate. You hear the shots. And the, the only thing that was really different, to be honest, man, is it was the walkout. Usually when you walk out, you've got fans screaming on the other side of you. It's like the place is buzzing, the place is bouncing, but that was the only difference, I feel. Once I got in there, the cage door was locked. I've got a job to do, man. So I was just kind of, I was kind of locked in, man. I was focused. So the only yeah. difference I would say, fighting with no, with no crowd would be the walkout. And obviously winning and, and the celebration and stuff like that, there's no fans there to kind of roll you up. Yeah, yeah. So on to the fight with Teddy. He went straight in for the takedown, which you successfully defended and very quickly turned it into into an offensive position. I'm guessing you were anticipating that to happen. I had a feeling as we kind of come in and grapple at some point, but I feel like it was gonna I thought it was gonna throw some strikes and set up his shot at first. I thought we were gonna have a wee bit of back and forth and then he would shoot, but I didn't expect it so early. Yeah. To be honest. But yeah. I did wait well, sprawled. And then he ended he up sitting through the guard. And yeah. then once I'm in somebody's guard and I'm in half guard, he, he, when I'm on top of them and it come and I can ground and pound and posture up, oh, it's an early night. I can generate some some serious power from ground and pound, man. Yeah. That's one of my strengths, definitely. I know, I know. So after landing those uh, heavy blows whilst in his guards, the fight got back standing. You moved back to striking range, landing a kick to his liver, which had him wincing, bringing the fight to a close. Was it clear to you at that point that now was the time to turn pro? Uh, not really. I'd say pro just because I was number one. I think I was either way, I always thought I was going to win that fight. Yeah, you know I mean, but I feel like I could, I could have fought anybody and I was going to turn pro. Once I just seen that number one on the topology, that was a great, great, great to see that man. I was uh, to be acknowledged as number one, uh, and then turning pro. I, and especially during this time, man, I feel like I, I, I never had as much progress competing because of lockdown and because of coronavirus. But the progress was still made, developing me as a fighter. So I feel like I was professional, professional level, and I've always looked at it, looked at the sport, and took the sport from a professional mindset. And carried myself that way. So uh, me being pro was inevitable. Just happened to be after I fought uh, Teddy. And like I said, like, like you said a minute ago, I probably believe that he'll be number one next. I think so. He's a young kid. He's good. I think he'll yeah. probably be number one. Quite soon. Yeah. Yeah. He was, as I said, he was very, um, very complimentary about you. You know, he said, oh, he's, he, a nice, he's a nice kid, man. He's brand lovely boy. Yeah. Lovely boy. He said that you belonged, you belonged to the professionals, to be fair. He's making his uh, move to the professionals. Yeah, he's moving to the professionals after that fight with me, and I, I think he belongs to be there. Um, yeah. Of course, I, I was gutted with my performance against him, but it, it speaks to his class. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely, man. I can't wait to start mixing up, especially with these small gloves on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Four-ounce gloves. The head and I can elbow. An elbow. You know I mean? I've, I've been deprived of that skill set for a long time. <laughs> That's what I Not anymore. No Never anymore. Going in the end, man. Wait till you see some. Jeez. So now, Mark, we come to the end of your flashlights, but we still have time for one more. At this point, you are now the undisputed UK and Ireland's number one amateur lightweight. Of course, you are aiming for bigger accolades, but come on, that's mightily impressive. Yeah, definitely. That was a. Uh... That was that was great to see that man. I remember seeing that. I, I don't know if someone told me. I looked it up. But I just remember going tap on and seeing Mark. Yeah, I was like, "Fucking yes!" I was buzzing, man. Number <laughs> one, man. I had to put it on the gram and all that, man. I of like, course. Finally, I'm getting a bit of acknowledgement for the work that I've put in. I remember looking at topology and there was guys that had like, like lesser records or beat lesser guys and they were above me before. And then seeing me yeah. number one, I was like, "About time!" Because I've got 100% finish rate. I finished every fight. 
I thought Correct. I did record. No, it's eleven and three and one. Correct. I should be number one. And then finally seeing that man, it was great to see, man. Yeah. That, that that for me, seeing that 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 was a pivotal moment for me turning pro. I maybe would have oh, stayed real? if I wasn't number one. I would have maybe got number one and then and then turned pro. So before we look at your flash fives, Mark. First of all, how would you rate the states of the UK am uh, amateur scene and any upcoming prospects at your gym that we may get to hear about in the near future? I'd say the UK scene is popping now, man. Eh? You know yourself, we are going to be causing a storm very, very soon, man, eh? when it comes to the rest of the... Oh. Sorry, man, that's just my, okay. my phone. That's all right. We it's almost finished. Bad. I was saying uh, it was called the UK scene popping, man. There's loads of gems, there's loads of talent, loads of shows. It's, it's great to see. And uh, prospects from my gym, oh, there's, there's loads. Uh, <laughs> Kieran Give us Reed. one. Kieran, Kieran Reid. Yeah, your boy, 6-0. I, I, I feel like he's, he's, he's underrated. Yeah, he's under the, he, he goes he's straight under guy, the radar. Man. Yeah, he's a Budo, right, Budo champion, isn't he? Yeah, Budo champion. That's it. He's solid, Kieran, man. He, uh, he's a good, come on the show, man. Yeah, therefore he he'll be turning pro shortly as well, man. And uh, he'll be he'll be tearing guys up, man. He's he's solid. Uh, got loads of good guys at the gym. Nathan, like I said, Nathan Hughes, the guys that the Nathan guy that Hughes. Yeah, yeah. He 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 he's still an amateur, man. But he'll be tearing up there as well. He's solid as well. Uh, young boy, Mark with Salas, right? We call him Wide Neck. He's never had wide, an amateur wide fight. Wide Neck. Yeah, Wide Neck. Mark okay. with Salas. He's never had an amateur fight yet. But mark my words, this kid's gonna be something. Serious, How old man. is he? 18, I think. 18. And oh, and Sean Clancy. Sean Clancy. I can't even mention Sean, Sean Clancy. Clancy. Okay. Be if I don't mention him, but he's solid, okay. man. He's like, this guy's like 17, 90 kilos. Fucking, oh man, he's an absolute beast. <laughs> Raw. Okay. Good, man. We have some Same. serious killers in their gym at the moment, man. Okay. I'll check him out as well, man. Okay. Fantastic. Well, Mark. And, and, and I'm sure your battery is happy as well. We move on to the final segment of the show, which is called Flash Fives. I will ask you five questions. And very simply, Mark, you give me your best answer. Is that okay, bro? Yeah, that's cool, man. Cool, bro. So first one, Mark, who would you love to compete against, either dead or alive? Oh. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, uh, Conor McGregor. I'd love, I'd love to fight Conor McGregor. Yeah, yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd love to fight him, man. You, you, would you like to fight motivated McGregor? I uh, definitely. The <laughs> with Conor McGregor, probably. Yeah, McGregor. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant answer. Your ideal way to finish an opponent. Walk off KO. <laughs> Either that or rear naked choke. Aye, like front kick to the face or something. Ah, the teep to the face. Nah, that's the one, man. That's, a, that's, that's the shot. one. That's the shot, man. That's the money shot. The best combat sports fight you've seen? Best combat sports fight I've seen? That's a hard one. Oh, Zhang Wei Lee versus Yuan on Jacek. What a fight, man. That's a serious guy. That's better than men's fights. A big fan of Zhang Wei Lee as well, man. I think she's so... Yeah. Who you got? She's. I think she's got Rose next. Rose, Rose uh, I think she probably runs through Rose, man. If I'm runs through her. I don't see anybody beating Jang really. I just think she's solid and I'm a big fan. Well, you think? But you think she'll she'll run through Rose? Maybe not run through, but she'll definitely beat her. Okay. Okay. I'm big, fine. I'm a big fan of Jang really. I just don't see anybody beating her for a while. Sure. She'll yeah. Probably no, she's got fucking Valentina Shevchenko or something to get a challenge. I reckon. Right. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, what superpower would you choose to have, Mark? Oh, wow. Ha, 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 You make me think here, man. Fly. Wish I could fly. Fly. Yeah, man. Where would you fly to? The moon, man. Everywhere. The moon. Trust. Be yeah, no man. That's mad. I'd be flying everywhere. True that. True that. And the final one then, Mark? The best finish to a fight you've seen that I've seen yeah the best finish the best finish to a fight Uriah Hall when he fought oh, the fight. in the, the helmet the spinning oh my goodness he nearly kills that guy 
He nearly did. And I remember I everyone was scared. Knockout, man. Yeah, everyone was scared to fight him. That was the that was the season with um Kevin Gaslam. I think yeah, Kevin Yeah, Kevin beat him in the final. That was a serious, serious knockout, man. I remember yeah. seeing that. I was like, whoa. Whoa. The pace and the power on that. And just and just seeing the guy, how devastated he was after it, like he was fucked up. But he took breathing heavy, like lucky yeah, he made it out of there, man. That was a serious kick. Yeah, this sport, this sport ain't for get, ain't, ain't ain't for playing, man. There's there's, no, there's no you can't playing play games. Game, no, nah, 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 nah. All right, Mark. So we're finished. Um, how did you enjoy the experience? Speaking to you, man, I've loved it. This is class, man. I, I'm I'm not I've, I'm not the best at doing interviews. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm just getting Me too. more and more comfortable as we as I do them. So I'm trying to do more and more. But coming on speaking to you, I feel like this has been a a normal a normal conversation, but a bro. Yeah, you know I mean, this has been. This has been class, man. I'd love to come Thank back you, on the show at some point. Once I've Definitely. had my, my pro debut and stuff. And I'm Definitely. buzzing a tear. I'll come on back on. Thank you, brother. Ah, uh, that means a lot, man. That, thank you, brother. That, mean, that means a lot. that, man, they've been great. Good questions, especially. Take me back in my career. Some things I wouldn't think of or I never look back at and thought about. So it's been great, man. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. No, you're welcome. Thank you. No, thank you. And thank you for, com- f- thank you for coming on, Mark. And I wish you all the very best in the future and for when you embark on your professional MMA career. And thank you to the viewers for joining Mark and I on episode 17 of Flash Knockdown. And in the words of Bruce Buffer, the show that engages with people of the combat sports world. Thank you to everyone. And thank you to Mark. Cheers, man. Thanks for having me on. Thank you, brother. Thank you.